in a few weeks, Maze of Millennia is going to be out, and Maze of Millennia is going to contain new cards from a bunch of animes, including new cards for the Earthbound archetype, but not the ones from 5Ds. That's probably why you might not recognize it if you watched a 5Ds anime, but you didn't watch Arc 5. For the longest time, Earthbound has not been its own deck. It's been completely unplayable. And what's kind of weird about this new Earthbound support is that it doesn't really help Earthbounds be Earthbounds. It's rather just trying to do its own thing. It's not like the Earthbounds that the Dark Signers were playing. This is probably like the, the closest Earthbound will ever be to like being like an actual archetype playable deck by itself without re relying on some outside support. But even then, I don't think you're going to be summoning your Earthbound Immortal, Uru, fucking Earthbound, Kickapakapu, or whatever other ones there are, right? There's like a bunch of new support card, and we kind of got a, a sneak peek of what the Earthbound support would look like. Age of Overlord, we got the Geo Gremlina. Because the thing about Age of Overlord was that it was supposed to come out after the Animation Chronicle, right? Like, it was supposed to be Animation Chronicle in the summer of Japan, and then Age of Overlord after. So... Animation Chronicle was supposed to give us all that support and Age of Overlord was supposed to support it, but here in America, it's backwards, right? Age of Overlord came out first, so we got all the support for, for stuff like Armored Exceed and the Earthbound Servant, and then we're gonna get the main batch of cards in a few weeks at this point. So Geo Gremlina, it's kind of impossible to summon without this new support. On Special Summon allows you to add an Earthbound monster from deck to hand, and if a monster your opponent controls is popped by an Earthbound card effect, you can inflict damage equal to one of those monsters' original attack. The new card the deck's gonna be focused around is a card called Harmonic Synchro Fusion, right? Where you can send two face up monsters you control to the graveyard, and you can simultaneously fusion summon and synchro summon using those two materials, right? So let's just say you had like a Deep Sea Diva and uh, Atlantean Prince. You can fusion summon into a Garura because they're the same type and same attribute, and you can also synchro summon into any level 3 synchro. So it basically, as long as the materials for the fusion and the synchro summon all work together, you can summon two monsters off of this one spell card. But you're locked into summoning fusions and synchros for the turn that you use this effect, meaning you cannot summon SP Little Knight or anything, any broken you know, Link Monsters, no Exceeds. Your deck has to be focused around the Fusions and Synchros. Now, some of the other supports say you can't summon Fusions and Synchros for the rest of the turn. This one says during the turn they activate this card, meaning if you plan to use this Earthbound support for Harmonic Synchro Fusion, you're gonna you're gonna have to really limit your uh, deck building. The hardest part about this is, is finding a Fusion Monster that's perfect for this. All the Earthbound support, all the new um, Earthbound Prisoners, <laughs> oh, I just realized they're called Earthbound Prisoners, uh, the, the smaller ones. So the Synchros are called the Earthbound, the Synchros and Fusions are called Earthbound uh, Servants. I thought they were all called Servant, but these are Earthbound Prisoners. Okay, so these are like, like Nigga's souls were held prison, I guess. But I don't remember, act, you know, actual Nigga's being held prisoner by the um, Earthbound guards. Your actual Earthbound monsters are Fiend Dark Monsters. So maybe if you had like another Dark Monster to mix this with, you could make a uh, Starving Venom or like Mud Dragon, if you have, I guess Dark would be the easiest way to do this, like if, you, if you're playing this as like Black Wings, but you wouldn't want to use your normal summon on these if you're playing something like Black Wings, so maybe like Bestials. And finding the right deck for this is kind of hard, but the deck I figured I wanted to use for it was your Sark deck. And the reason I came to find, figured out to use this deck is because the fusion I figured out would actually be best is Chimera the Phantom King. I'm gonna call it Chimera King for this entire video, but Chimera King is the perfect target because it requires a beast and a fiend, and all the level 7 your Sarctic monsters are beasts, and all the Earthbound monsters are fiends. So that means if you mix your Line Walker, which is the one that searches Harmonic Synchro Fusion in the first place with a level 7 beast, you get to make a Baron and you get to make Chimera King all in one activation. You can either use Chimera King for a Synchro Summon, or you can just pop it with Baron, and during the opponent's turn, it can start to re revive essential cards from Grave for you, right? Um, it can revive any beast monster, so it can revive Mick Polar. Mick Polar's on special summon. Mick Polar can add another Ursarctic from deck to hand. It can revive Line Walker or Groundkeeper, and essentially, it can kind of keep the engine in a decent resource loop. It is, it's not perfect, in, but in a decent resource loop. You could also play the, the other Chimera King, the Burfamet Dark Ruler guy. He will summon out your banished beast or, or, or fiend monsters. 
The only issue is is that you don't banish the earthbound stuff, only the your Sarctic stuff will get banished. So if you can't find or get your hands on Chimera King, then Burfmet King can also work, but Burfmet only works for the McPolar. And during the main combo, which you guys are gonna see, like McPolar does actually have a chance to get banished during your turn. So it's not like you have to like go out of your way to set that up. So this is the deck list that we're gonna be working with. We're, you see we're at 17 on the extra deck, but that's cause these last four synchros here, you can, it's kind of like pick and choose there, there, there's no like right or wrong answer at the moment because this deck is still kind of new you know i don't really see a lot of people working with earthbound with the usarctic deck so that's why i'm like i'm always in flux when it comes to the cards i play in my side deck it always based on the format and you know potential cards to play in main uh, we're also on the upstarts because if you know your Sarctics already, you know they have this amazing card called Radiation where they could draw up to seven cards the turn that is activated <laughs> because it takes so much for them to start their turn. That's why they have such a crazy card like this. You don't always go into Radiation, but there are going to be some hands where Radiation is going to be your only thing that you're able to play. And playing a card like Prosperity is going to completely shut this down. Like this deck cannot play off of a single card. Your Sarctics never play off of just one card. They all, they usually need two to three cards to start. And so I don't think Prosperity digging you for one card will actually help you as much as digging your deck into more level sevens or higher's. And our level sevens are higher's. We have a pretty robust package of level seven or higher's on top of having space for non-engine. So I I think like the build isn't perfect, but I think it's pretty good for what it is, right? We got triple Fenrir, we got Nib. You could cut Fenrir down to two if you wanna play more hand traps. You could also cut the upstarts. Upstarts is a perfect card to cut for, for more hand traps. If you wanna have more starters, you can play Small World because they're all water, but none of their other stats match each other, right? So like for, for example, the level sevens, they all have 700 attack, except for Alpha Ursatron, which has 700 defense. And then Megatanis and all the level eights, they all have 700 defense. Um, so it's like, they're all water. So if you wanted to go like Fenrir, search Fenrir, then go Small World, Small World, banish Fenrir. The only thing that's like identical is the fact that Fenrir and Megatanis has 2400 attack. You can go from Megatanis into McPolar, which is your best, your Sarctic card, if you can tell. That's why it's the only one <laughs> in our main deck at three, because they're both water, right? Nothing else matches, right? McPolar's beast, he's beast warrior. McPolar's level 7, Mega Tens is level 8, 700 attack, 2400 attack, 700, 2000 defense, 700 defense. So the only thing that matches is the fact that they're water, and the only thing that matches is the fact that Mega Tennis and Fenrir have 2400 attack. So that's like the best small world line. There, there are definitely others, but I feel like that's like the best one because it's off of a Fenrir search, and you, you're never going to use that second Fenrir unless you're you're in a really, really long grind game. Also, never use Fenrir's effect to search first, um, unless you don't have Departure or unless you don't have McPolar. If you have McPolar, tribute another level seven or higher monster in your hand and then get the Fenrir search because you would rather get drolled um, on the McPolar search than on the Fenrir search, I, just for future reference. But I guess I have to introduce you guys to both your Sarctic and Earthbound at the same time because I have not covered either of these archetypes. So I guess let's just get started with some of the replays just so I could. I'm just gonna start with like test hands for regular Sarctic. So before we were playing the Earthbounds, we were playing Righty Lefty Driver. And Righty Lefty Driver was great because it's set up for your Sarctic Polari. Potentially could set you up a Baron on top of a Adamantspider Dragite, depending on how the hand was played. So a hand like this in your Sarctic is really crazy. We also used to play Malfi Caddy because we have level 8 tuners in our deck. Malfi Caddy is a level 2 non-tuner. And during end phase, it can summon itself and then um, basically during your opponent's turn, it, it can bounce itself back to hand, then add a beast monster from deck to hand. And because of that, we can, some of our Yersarctics are beast. And so all the Yersarctics have quick effects in hand where they contribute another level seven or higher, some of themselves, even during your opponent's turn. And if you have two or more of them on field, that's when their, their effects start to activate. Mick Polar is like the only one that you can use without the need of having another Yersarctic in your hand already. So that's why McPolar is the best one. So we started with Radiation. And so Radiation, every time you summon a Yersarctic from hand or extra deck, you could remove one counter from this card and draw one. It starts with seven counters, and then that's not once per turn. The only con condition for this card is you can only control one of it at a time. And when it runs out of counters, it's kind of just stuck there. It just recycles stuff during end phase, and that's about it. But um, yeah, Yersarctics have a really cool Gundam 
space theme. I'm not too sure on what it is or why they decided to mix it with polar bears, but hey, you know, it's the holidays, so, you know, um, it, it's a winter theme deck, I guess. <laughs> All right, so basically we start with Ready, summon Lefty from deck, and then, yeah, and Lefty is really cool in deck as well because Lefty, uh, turn three, can banish itself, add another Ready Driver from deck to hand, and Ready Driver can summon out another Lefty. So it's it's actually really convenient. Both of them go into Polari, and the cool thing about Radiation is that Radiation does trigger when it wants to draw a card, which means it, it, it could lose to Ash, but you can also chain block it, right? You chain link one Radiation, you could chain link two Polari, and so Polari is gonna place the field spell from deck, which means this doesn't lose to Ash Blossom, and now Radiation still gets to draw you a card while you get to dig deeper into your deck before drawing the card. Then we go Ursatron, and Alpha Ursatron's pretty cool. It's both of your Sarctic and a Drytron card, right? So the Drytron and the your Sarctics are, are linked. Um, they they like fused their battleships or whatever or something like that. And so the only issue with this card is that it can be ashed on its effect to summon itself. This deck could lose really heavily to a well-timed Ash Blossom, but look, statistically, it's more likely that you'll resolve this card than they'll use an Ash on it, you know, because they because you have seven to eight ways into Alpha Ursatron, whereas like Ash Blossom is only a three of in a 40 card deck, right? That's only 33% chance at maximum that they open Ash Blossom. So statistically, you only get negated half the time. So that means half the time this resolves, but that's if they use Ash Blossom on this effect, right? That's just if they, they read the card properly. If they try to imperm this after a summon, you can be like, oh, well, actually its effect is all in one. So because we already have radiation, we got to search departure. Departure is one of the best searchers and it's a two for one searcher, which I think is really risky. It's a high risk, high reward kind of strategy, right? I just said we lose to Ash Blossom pretty hard, right? Ursatron Alpha loses to Ash. Departure loses to Ash because you're dropping two in a deck where you already need to tribute a monster from hand just to start. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of risky, but um, if it resolves, you pretty much get full combo. Um, in the deck, which is a floodgate for any monster your opponent summons from the extra deck. So, yeah, the reason why you guys are seeing this now is because I was going to make this your Sarctic video earlier in the year, and then I figured, eh, you know, I, I kind of just shrugged it off. I, 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 I think I was just lazy. And then other decks came out, and I was like, well, it's maybe I should just focus on the newer stuff. Um,. So yeah, like you, you're gonna see me doing a lot of tributing, a lot of like adding to hand, a lot of drawing, but you gotta realize like none of this really does much. Like this doesn't, like I've drawn four cards so far and not, not much has happened. <laughs> you know, in most decks where if you draw four cards, that's like full combo times two. You're ending on 15 cards on field, 20 negates. In your Sarctic, it's like, I don't know, maybe I might just get like an like one extra negate on field if I draw four cards. <laughs> uh, that's th that's the difference. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is kind of funny um, how little your Sarkic can do at time, but there are some interactions you should know. Um, the first being that Polar Star, um, Polar Star can tribute a level eight or higher Sarctic from hand and then special summon a level seven or Sarctic Synchro from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. And then it gains the effect where if, if your opponent were to, your opponent cannot activate the effects of monsters with a level that are summoned from the extra deck, which means any fusions or synchros or pendulums that, that are summoned from the extra deck cannot activate their effects while that, while that summoned monster is on the field, right? And the monster that we always summon with that is your Sarctic Septentrion. Now, how did we just summon that without actually tributing the Polar Star when it says it needs to be tributed? That's where Big Dipper comes in. Big Dipper, the field spell, allows you to, if you would tribute a monster to activate a your Sarctic effect, you can banish a level seven or higher your Sarctic from Graveyard instead. Meaning, and that, that applies to your, your Sarctics in hand as well. That means like if you're if you get far enough to set up Big Dipper, Big Dipper can start to um, allow you to either stop going minus to activate your your Sarctic effects, but also 
completely ignore the cost of like your Polar Star and your Polari, right? Because Polari can also tribute a level seven or higher to either add a your Sarctic from hit from graveyard to hand or special summon uh, your Sarctic from your graveyard. Now, the reason why this has to be ignoring summoning conditions, which I guess I kind of skimmed over, is because these your Sarctics are not synchro summoned. They're not, they, they are, they have their own unique summoning condition, which is kind of like the um, dark synchroing, the way they did dark synchroing in, in, in 5Ds, where your tuner has to have a higher level than your non tuner. So that's why righty lefty driver works, is because. Um, or actually, no, the tuner doesn't have to have a higher level for, for the level ones. It's only for level sevens. Um, it's only for level sevens that you have to have a, a level eight or higher tuner, but for the level ones, they just, you, you need to have a tuner and a non-tuner with a level difference of one. And so it's like two minus one equals one, as long as there's a tuner involved, you know, um, that's why deep sea diva also worked, right? Cause deep sea diva level two tuner, Atlantean prince, level one, non-tuner boom you get you get your sarctic polari so they cannot be synchro summoned normally which means you can like because you can't synchro summon level one normally but also your level sevens cannot be synchro summoned normally they have to be summoned using the your sarctic summoning condition so now you have to basically what you have to do is you have to summon a level eight tuner twice so you have to summon level seven non-tuner, which is what most of your Sarctics, or all the your Sarctic level sevens are non-tuners, all the level eights are tuners. So now you got to you, you need a level eight tuner, like Mega Billis or Mega Polar, and then you need a level seven non-tuner to make the first Polari, or the first your Sarctic Synchro. Then you place Big Dipper, then you go into Polar Star, right? You um getting another level seven non-tuner plus another level eight tuner or any two monsters with a level difference of one, um, as long as one of them's a tuner. Then you get Polar Star. Polar Star can then activate its effect, ignoring its cost by using Big Dipper's, um, by uh, applying Big Dipper's first effect. And then you get into your Septentrion, which can be summoned using a level eight or higher tuner and a level one non-tuner. And, uh, oh, and the non-tuner has to be a synchro for Septentrion and for our Chariot as well. Wow, our extra deck used to look so different. But don't worry about the extra deck here. This is just showing what your Sarkic can do. So there goes Radiation, draws another card. Go Megatannis, go Grand Chariot, go Radiation, draws another card. And we have very sadly ended on And we, and that's another thing. Just don't be scared to use the extra monster zone because after every your Sarctic is summoned from hand, you are locked into only summoning monsters with levels anyway, which is why Earthbound is going to be so perfect, uh, for, for your Sarctic once I start showing it because the Earthbounds only use synchros and fusions, and since you're only using synchros and fusions. You, you, you're not going to need the extra monster zone for a link monster or whatever. You're not going to have to sacrifice Septentrion later on in the turn. So, yeah, don't be scared to use the extra monster zone because if we used our extra monster zone, we could have made an Ice Jade Synchro here using the uh, Ran, Ran Air, Ran Adrian. I, 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 I guess I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm, I'm not too sure. But yeah. I'm, I'm sure you guys get the point, right? Like this is this is what your Sarctic does. So yeah, I'm gonna walk through what Earthbound starts to offer you, um, and this is the typical combo that you get off of your Sarctic departure. Now with um, the Earthbounds on top on, on top of that, um, pre Ursatron Alpha, which there really was no combos in this deck, you kind of just like drew cards and hoped that you got the best, the most off of them. And that was kind of it. Now with Polar Star and, and Ursatron Alpha, we actually do have guaranteed combos that we can make just off of one Eusarctic Departure. It, this is better than drawing Mick Polar in some ways because it also has a graveyard effect where if a if you attribute to activate a Eusarctic monster effect, except to turn sent to graveyard, you could banish it from graveyard to substitute that cost. 
that is also available during your opponent's turn. So at the end of your, t so once you hit your opponent's turn, you'll have two basically free summons using Big Dipper and using Departure and Grave. As long as Departure hits your graveyard, you should be good to during your opponent's turn as well as during your turn. So we're gonna start with Departure. You always wanna go for McPolar and you also always wanna go for a level eight. Any of your level eights will suffice. Um, just pick your favorite one, right? Like Mega Billis has the most attack. Mega Polar, I think, has the most. It's, it's, it's just my favorite one. It just looks the coolest. And then Mega Tannis uh, can, can book a moon monsters. So all three of them are pretty good in their own rights. You're going to add the one that you don't care about because it's going to be stuck in the graveyard. So I guess Mega Billis because he only banishes cards, right? So now we can activate Mega Polar, drop the Mega Billis, special summon Mega Polar. McPolar effects. You're gonna add your Ursatron Alpha. Now I've cut Ursatron Alpha down to one in the in the Earthbound build of the deck only because the Earthbound build is not completely based around your Sark decks anymore. So it, it'll it may sometimes be a hand where you only have the Groundkeeper or you only have the uh, Earthbound engine and there's nothing else that you can do with it. So I don't want to. Um, mess around with that too much. I don't want to brick on it too much, basically. So now, because you control a your Sarctic or Drytron monster, which is McPolar, um, especially on Ursatron, Ursatron, then adds a your Sarctic Spoiler Trap from deck to hand. Now, normally Radiation, really good card, but for this situation, just for showing off like what the combo is, we're gonna sh we're gonna add the Slider because Slider guarantees us. You know something whereas radiation doesn't so now at this point we're going to normal summon our groundkeeper groundkeeper is going to use this effect and it gets to summon a level five or lower earthbound monster from deck or graveyard now none of the fusions or synchros are level five or lower it basically means that uh even like turn two turn three it, it can revive some of our best um earthbounds from graveyard on top of from our deck it's a really great card to keep in keep in the resource loop it's a great three of, right? Because it, it, it's not a complete brick. So now we, we're going to summon out Linewalker. Linewalker gets to add us a, uh, either Earthbound Prison or Harmonic Synchrofusion. Earthbound Prison's cool because it's kind of like a negate. It's a really good turn two card. So if you want to keep like one Earthbound Prison in your side deck just for going second, you could. But uh, for the most part, you're going to be adding Harmonic Synchrofusion. Also, it's really great because this can play through Droll if you open the Harmonic Synchrofusion and you you can discard it for something like Ursarctic Departure or Forbidden Droplet. And then um, it, it can still add the Harmonic Synchrofusion from Graveyard to Hand. And that's why this works so well with the Chimera King because if you Chimera King banish some of this back from Graveyard, it also gets to add the Harmonic Synchrofusion back from Graveyard to Hand. We're gonna activate our Harmonic Synchrofusion, sending Linewalker and sending our Yersarctic Mikpolar. And so now we get to summon out Chimera King because, you know, a beast and a fiend. This only works with your level seven beast monsters, right? So Ursatron Alpha doesn't work with that, but it does work with your level seven beast. And because it's a three and a seven, we get to make 10. So Baron this time, extra monster zone, right? <laughs> Don't be afraid to use it. And Chimera King, wherever, it doesn't really matter. Now you see, we could, we have a level one tuner, level seven non-tuner, level six non-tuner. We don't have the ability to make Polari right now, right? We can't go into the Ursarctic side of the extra deck unless we revive our Megabilis. Now, the cool thing about Slider is that it can summon from um, your Ursarctic monsters that are banished as well as in your graveyard. So like, I don't know if they DD Crow you or something, or I don't know. You can still, you know, turn two, turn two, turn three, you can still use it. Uh, so we're going to bring back the Mega Billis. And now we have a level eight, seven, uh, a level eight tuner and a level seven non-tuner with a level difference of one, allowing us to uh, contact Dark Synchro, whatever you want to call it. There's no proper name for it yet. Special summon your Sarctic Polari. Polari is going to activate and go for Big Dipper. Now that's important because every time a monster is special summoned, you get a counter on Big Dipper. So you want to go for that before you start going off on other 
um, combos and such. And yes, Polari can tribute a level seven or higher monster to summon a, a Yersarctic from Grave, but sadly, both the Chimera fusions are level six, meaning these are kind of useless, right? If you don't have Groundkeeper, like if let's say we only opened um, Line Walker, at this point, you just pop the Chimera King using Baron's effect. But because we control both the Groundkeeper and the King of Phantom Beasts, we can Synchro Summon into an FA Dawn Dragster. And now we get an extra Negate on field and we get, um, you know, count and we start to build up counters on our Big Dipper. Now we get to activate our Polari and we will use Big Dipper's effect to substitute the cost, meaning we can banish something like our Ursatron Alpha to substitute the cost and then special summon back our Yersarctic McBillis or Megabillis, excuse me. And that's two counters on it. And then we can go into our dark synchro contact, our dark contact synchro thingy into Septentrion. And now we have our full setup. Now, Big Dipper only has three counters. It needs seven or more counters to resolve its effect, but we're gonna get there, don't worry. Here we go into end phase. And now during our opponent's turn, and I'm, I'm gonna leave chain on, we are not going to use Baron's effect. What we can do is we can use our Chimera King's effect. Now Chimera King can either summon back the Groundkeeper, and then Groundkeeper would be able to revive Line Walker, or it could add the McPolar, or we can special summon about the McPolar and McPolars add another Yersarctic from deck to hand. So let's say for the sake of argument, we're gonna go Groundkeeper, boom, Groundkeeper effect, and then we get to bring back Line Walker, boom. Five counters, line walker effect. We get to add harmonic synchrofusion back from my graveyard to our hand. With harmonic synchrofusion, there aren't too many targets left. The only target we have left is our Geo Kraken. Maybe it's worth like not like me like you, you may have to wait until you get another groundkeeper turn three to actually be able to resolve this effect because I don't think playing a second Chimera King is worth it. You could play the other one, the like Burfamet, where it's like, if it's banished, you know, you could also do that, but it's not mandatory. If you want to go for another Polari turn three and then go like maybe three plus one into Herald of the uh, Arclight, that's another option. But this is like the base combo. You can also pivot between this and McPolar, right? And the reason why McPolar is so important is because if it adds more Yusarctics, just as I explained about Megabilis, we have more level eight Yersarctics, right? So we can have the Megatanus, which can book a Muna monster during our opponent's turn. And we have the Megapolar, which can pop a Spell or Trap during our opponent's turn. So we have two interruptions that can significantly handle our, you know, uh, opponent's turn, whatever, depending on the deck they're playing. And in this situation, we, we would be able to um, add one with Sententrion once when, when they special summon a monster. It still works. So, so that's like the base combo, right? Uh, from here with Baron, Dawn Dragster, and Septentrion, it, it will be very hard for them to deal with things. Septentrion single-handedly shuts down SP Little Knight, every Link monster. It's very hard for them to play around this card. If they're only on Links and exceeds in their deck, right? Like he doesn't care about his Zeus. This deck mostly loses to spell and trap removal rather than monster removal. So that's why you have your Baron de Fleur and your Don Draxer and your Big Dipper to, to potentially snatch monsters on top of that. So if you don't feel like reviving the Groundkeeper to have more space to snatch a monster with Big Dipper, you can also do that. Really, the, the world's your fucking oyster. I would love if you could end on like an IP, but unfortunately that's not possible in this deck, at least. That's your typical combo, right? Uh, with, with your Sarctic now, I'm gonna show you guys just some test hands because it's really hard to showcase what this deck can do with um, with just a combo. So because most times it's going to be based off of like maybe if you draw this off of radiation or something of that nature, right? Radiation just makes this deck too random to really uh, theory. Sometimes you just have to play it out. So we go into our Mega Polar. And the Fenrir search is, is great, right? The fact we were able to like start more efficiently because we got the Fenrir search and we could tribute the nib from hand turn one. So it's not really a brick. 
if we draw it going like regardless of if we draw it going first or going second as long as we have like a mega polar the bureau can still be useful so we might as well max it out right if if, if they do in too much and we're going second just nib them if and then if they don't play into nib we can just drop it for our your sarctic cards so yeah now we're starting to get our radiation draws we're going to tribute the fenrir especially about the, the mega polar and the reason why we're tributing with Polari now, where we're not tributing the cost is again because of Polar Star, like I mentioned earlier. You don't want to use that on Polari's effect, you want to save it for Polar Star. So, if you have the ability to make a Polar Star, go for it. But you have to go, but Big Dipper has to be in play first. So, that's why it's it's kind of important. So, we're going for Polar Star, right? And we're at two counters on Big Dipper right now. So, Polar Star, now we're going to substitute the cost, and now we have a Septentrion with the condition of um, now every monster they summon from the extra deck without a level skill drain, every monster that they summon from the extra deck with a level cannot activate effect. So it's like, it's like a double skill drain uh, or it's like a complete, uh, maybe like a Necroz a Unicorn basically for monsters summoned from extra deck on top of being able to search your Sarctic cards when they smash summon a monster. So yeah. So there we go into our Stone Sweeper, and Stone Sweeper is played at three because he can discard himself at a level three or lower Fiend Tuner from deck to hand, but you cannot special some monsters from the extra deck except for Fusion and Synchros. Meaning this might be good in Infernoid as well, if Infernoid wanted to play this engine because um, the only issue is, is that uh, modern Infernoid does rely on Link monsters a lot. So it is kind of, uh, a big ask not to be able to summon link monsters but searching but another searcher for decatron i don't know if, if you can't afford the wanted engine this might just might just be a way to play in, in way to play infernoid so now we're um going for line walker mctanis and now we get to go harmonic synchro fusion this late in the turn um, and it, it's it's not a bad thing to go for harmonic synchro fusion this this late. Uh, and there we popped our Chimera King. I should have summoned Baron in, in extra monster zone. I know I should have taken my own advice. Um, and if I would have had access to one more level eight tuner, maybe could have made level nine, level ten synchro. That's the only issue with leaving some of these or with using the things to substitute the cost. It like awkwardly leaves these like level one 700 attack monsters on your field which with big dipper might not be the worst situation in the world because now um if they special summon a monster you can snatch one of them right like all all you need is two more special summons and then you can start uh you know snatch stealing monsters during your opponent's turn but ultimately yeah, just 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 make sure that your space management is is proper. You know that you're summoning Baron in your extra Mars's zone, and you'll be all right. Like we ended on Imperm, Ash, uh, a skill drain from everything from extra deck, and and you know a uh, big dipper. So I, I think we should be fine. But it, it you know you, you guys know how my unique is. We also do have the Mega Tannis just in case. Um, I would love if they summoned like an IP Mascarena and we could just snatch it with like Septentrion or with um with a Big Dipper. That would be great. That would be perfect. As a matter of fact, if they want to um make an SP Little Knight still, <laughs> uh, so that we could snatch it with a uh, Big Dipper and then they won't be able to um to use its effect because Septentrion's on field. I'm also okay with that. Uh. Typhon loses to this card because Ty because this is a it's they're both continuous effects that Typhon re re regardless of what Typhon says S Septentrion does not care so your Baron will still be live under a Typhon actually that's really that's really important to know <laughs> because if they try to summon Typhon just be like give them the the Septentrion and say just read just read the card again just please for for your own sake and yeah during end phase radiation gets to shuffle back uh your Sarctic from deck. Which means basically, uh, if you do send your Polaris or Polar Stars to, to the graveyard, that's the best. That's the best way to like get rid of them. I think, you know, put them into grave or somehow get them to grave and then put them back into action. And now during your opponent's turn, Line Walker, which I, again, 
you know, you don't have to do this. You can wait to, to do something, maybe potentially go into battle phase to swing over some of your smaller monsters. If they don't swing over your smaller monsters, you're still not too worried. Uh, you can tribute some in using your, your Sarctics. Get rid of your Polar Star. Or you can go for your Grand Chariot. You have a lot of options in this deck. You could also Baron, in case you use a Baron Negate, you can Baron Shuffle back, summon some like Fenrir, or um, you can't summon back the Synchros because they have to be summoned by their own effect and they can't be revived. But you definitely have options. You definitely have a lot of options in this deck. And that that's really like what's most important is that this deck kind of rewards the more, um, the more technical play Right, like you have to know when to stop your opponent. Like this can become a, a, a really decent control deck if you know how to stop your opponent at, at the right time. Um, but I'm not sure if it's if it's gonna be enough for you to play through certain meta decks. Going first, definitely going second, I'm not sure. <laughs> um So let's look at uh, another test hand. So this time we, we kind of bricked on the double stone sweeper and it would be better if this was a level um, seven or higher monster. But this is this is a hand where like you kind of can't tell what's gonna happen, right? Like we have Fenrir, we have stone sweeper, like what are we supposed to do with this? Well, let's see what I come up with. I don't even remember this one, so. I'm gonna go McBillis. McBillis gets to summon itself. And here's, here's the cool thing, right? Um, so Fenrir, you know, searches itself, and then you can drop that search Fenrir for McBillis. But McBillis is one of the only, uh, like McBillis and McTannis both kind of set you up for another Yersarctic, right? Because they, they kind of have a high cost, but by paying that high cost, he gets to set up another Yersarctic on top of setting up himself. So McBillis gets to summon another Yersarctic from hand. And McTannis, when it's summoned, it can book a Muna monster your opponent controls it. Clearly our, our opponent's board is clear, so they may have to wait for a turn three activation, but still, um, the fact that we're able to get both of these out using only one level seven tribute, pretty good, pretty good. So now we go ground keeper, we're gonna go line walker, and we went line walker here because we have to use our level seven beast, and if we would have sacrificed um, our McBillis there to, to make Polari, we, we would have been significantly weakening our end board, right? We can use the Fenrir. Fenrir is cool, but it's not going to be game breaking. It's not as uh, impactful as like a Baron is. Now, I know what you're also thinking is like, why use Fenrir when, when we can use um, our Groundkeeper and Chimera King to make a level sin seven synchro that doesn't sacrifice our Fenrir. And I, I really thought about it and I'm like, in this deck, I think Dondraxer is more impactful than Fenrir is. We already have a one of the best synchros in the game pretty much like like septentrion when it hits the field is one of the best synchros in the game it just takes way too long to hit the field um but when it hits the field it's one of the best synchros you could you could play uh, although wait this time i didn't go for the huh well, that's cool. I went for the Earthbound Server Geo Gremlin. That's actually really cool that, that I'm showing this off. Um, so Geo Gremlin, basically if you don't have any of the Yersarctics and you open and you only open up the Earthbound side of things, Geo Gremlin is a great um, a great con control card by itself. It has a quick effect to pop a monster your opponent controls uh, during the main phase. And you can either destroy that monster or you can gain life points equal to that monster's attack. So in time, this deck could do pretty well. Also, during the battle phase, you can fusion summon an earthbound fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing materials from your hand, field, or graveyard. Meaning the two monsters that you use to make him, you can banish these two to make your earthbound servant Geo Kraken. And Geo Kraken is crazy because Kraken can pop monsters that are special summoned from, from your opponent's extra deck and clear as many monsters your opponent controls that are special summoned that turn. It's kind of like a mini Nibiru as a fusion monster um, once they summon it from, from the extra deck. So really cool card. 
unfortunately kind of difficult to summon. Like I know it's fusion materials doesn't seem that difficult, but actually setting it up is a lot harder and a lot more inconsistent than, um, than it may seem. So now we get to go into our Septentrion. And uh, really, the only reason why we were even able to make this in the first place is because Stone Sweeper can summon itself from hand while you have a card in the field spell zone, meaning Polari sets up Stone Sweeper to be summoned later on in the turn, and you can choose between summoning, uh, you know, Dondra Exer using uh, 1 plus 6, or you can make uh, your level 6 that just pops monsters. Both of them are pretty, are, are pretty good choices. So... And then you can Baron pop the uh, Chimera Fusion, and Big Dippers have four counters, but remember we have the Chimera Revive, we have the Geo Gremlin Fusion, and we have the Septentrion add on top of him being a, a Floodgate. So your Sarctics are pretty cool. I think they work pretty well with the Earthbound stuff. I think I've, I've done a good job um, showing why the synergy works. I've yet to go into games with this deck because um, I want to learn more ways to play around hand traps. This is really just a proof of concept video. That's why it's kind of like disorganized compared to what I usually um, upload, but it's, I'm sure the process will speak for itself, right? So now we've drawn Big Dipper and drawing Big Dipper sometimes might be tough because it's a card that you could search out of deck. So you kind of don't want to draw it. But drawing radiation could be a good thing because now it allows you to play more a little more free form you know um as long as you have your your sarctic monsters in hand you can always uh keep going with radiation so it, it's it's a great card to draw um in your opening hand but you don't want to play too many copies of it because it might conflict with the earthbound stuff so here we are we went for departure and you know departure is already full combo and we already had the slider as well so this is really just everything that we need in one hand and we drew the stone sweeper look at that <laughs> um so we went into the polar star a lot earlier than than we usually do because we didn't need to go for polari because we already had big dipper and i suggest you do that every single time that you draw big dipper you go straight into polar star and just summon out the septentrion now um, because we drew Stone Sweeper, and we, well, we, we gotta get our draw first, but because we drew Stone Sweeper, get Ground Keeper, Ground Keeper get Line Walker, Line Walker get Harmonic Synchro Fusion, Harmonic Synchro Fusion, Baron, Chimera King, Dawn Dragster, and yeah, now we have seven counters on Big Dipper, we have Follow Up with McPolar, we have Imperm, we have the double negate well we complete negate with septentrion right like there's a normal negate and then there's a complete negate right uh so this is this is a completely negates everything from extra deck basically um baron don dragster and then follow up with chimera king into either ground keeper or into line walker um if you're summoning your if you're still summoning the or Sarctic monsters from hand, you could uh, choose to just summon Line Walker by itself and not go through the Groundkeeper. It's really personal preference, but uh, yeah. This is this is honestly the best I've seen your Sarctic uh, play since like it, since since it's come out. Most times, it's like if you draw Lucky off of Radiation, maybe you can make something. If you draw Lucky off of um, the deep sea engine was good, but it was only good because of Halk. Um, and once Halk was banned, it was a lot harder for the deep sea engine to like keep up with the meta. The deep sea minstrel was cool. Uh, it being, being able to look at your opponent's hand and stuff. And there's even a time where I consider like a hand loop version of your, your Sarctic where um, I minstrel, I look at your hand, then I mind crush you based on, based on the hand knowledge that I know that you have. Um, but then a pointer got banned and I was like, yeah, it's, it's a little more risky now. Um, there's also the, the water spirit, uh, the water spell chart where you tribute a water, you look at your opponent's hand, drop one, right? So 
there is a hand loop version of Deep Sea and your Sarctic out there that you could uh, mess around with if this doesn't really appeal to you. Or in case you've, you're watching this after Maze of Millennia comes out and this your, and this Earthbound stuff is kind of expensive, then maybe go go play the Deep Sea version um, or a pure version instead, like a pure righty lefty driver version. But I guess time will tell. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how your Sarctic has, has turned out. Um, I might, as I said, I might go into playing the other Chimera Fusion, right? I might put the Birth Met in as well. I might implement, um, more, more higher level synchros. Geomathic Magma is another good one because it's a level eight tuner synchro. So if you open, so if you don't open a way into a level eight um, synchro, you can harmonic synchro fusion into this using Groundkeeper, you know, uh, in case you need it. And for the side deck, we actually have a lot of cool things going on in our side deck. So, um, because we need level seven or higher's level seven or higher hand traps work really well in this deck. So Phantasma is perfect for a deck like this. Uh, if it's if it's a meta call, then it's perfect card to use. Uh, Scare Cash because if you're going to be dropping that extra Fenrir from hand, turn three, if Fenrir's still on field, you can search Scare Cash and then summon it from hand. Um, Small World, I already uh, emphasized how good Small World is. Alpha is another good one. Um, Alpha can go into Pep because, like, Alpha's level eight, Line Walker's level three, and it still makes uh, Chimera King. So, for going second, maybe if you want to side out uh, Fenrir or you want to side out like Upstarts and play more uh, level seven or higher in your deck, Alpha is another good one. Savaris stops your monsters from being targeted, uh, and it's searchable, semi searchable through Herald of the Arclight but I wouldn't really rely on that. Um, for for the most part, I'd say Savaris is, is pretty good uh, for it's like double purpose, but back in the day, your Sarctic wasn't consistent enough for this to be like a decent card without bricking you. So for the longest time, your Sarctic players have stopped using this, but I do still think it's worth consideration at least so that you don't lose to an imperm on your polar or on your groundkeeper or line walker and then kaijus kaijus are good as well right they're level eight or higher and you can kind of just main these if you wanted to if you if you want to take out nibs and main kaijus so that your deck is good both going first and going second that's also another option and you can kind of play as many kaijus as you want right because there's there's really no harm in like dropping them on your opponent and then like using an interrupted kaiju slumber. Quint charge is, it's it's an okay card. It allows you to, to basically use, summon the, to, to, to contact dark synchro during your opponent's turn uh, if you have the right materials or you can add a, your Sarctic from graveyard to hand. It's decent. It's not really searchable during your turn unless you want to search it off of Ursatron, but during your opponent's turn, you can add it with Subcentrion, so so that's a good follow-up. So if you ever need to play through like a grind game, Quint, Quint Charge isn't a terrible card to have. Um, and this is Earthbound Prison. This is the card I said. This is the other card that's searchable off of Line Walker because it only searches two cards for some reason. And it can, uh, when it's activated, you target an effect monster your opponent controls and it negates that effect while this card's in the field zone. Everything else, it's like you can normal summon a Earthbound in addition to your normal summon. So if it's just destroyed by, by an opponent's card effect, you gets to completely fuck over your opponent's board. And it can still be added back off of Line Walker. So it's definitely a cool card for consideration. This is coming in Maze of Millennia. Earthbound Fusion comes in Phantom Nightmare. The issue I have with Earthbound Fusion is that there's no way for the deck to actually search this card. Groundkeeper doesn't search it, Line Walker doesn't search it, Stone Sweeper doesn't search it. Grimlina only searches Earthbound Monsters, doesn't search Earthbound cards. None of the Earthbound cards actually search Earthbound Fusion. It's not the best card, but it allows you to make Geo Kraken more consistently. If you do feel like playing it in, in any Earthbound variant, that's really up to you. Kraken is like the best Earthbound card, but it's like the hardest one to get up. Geo Griffin is cool for follow-up, right? Uh, if you can make a level eight synchro turn three, 
You can make Geogriffin start to revive, like maybe your Line Walker and stuff, and start to go into like higher level synchros. That's another possibility for you to go into. Um, you don't have to play Polaria too. You can play it at one and then use like your McTennis to add it back to hand. It's personal preference. I was almost theoring with, with Infernoid. I'm like, I can normal summon Decatron, mill some of my Infernoids, and then make it a level eight to use with McPolar. Vishuda, we were almost on Vishuda, but the fact that Harmonic Synchro Fusion locks us for the turn and not just for the rest of the turn means we won't be able to make Monk of the Tenyi and resolve Harmonic Synchro Fusion in the same turn. And there's also no non-effect monster synchro monster that, that we can play in this deck other than scrap archfiend <laughs> and i'm not playing that because that requires me to go all the way through into chimera king right and that kind of defeats the purpose because the, the whole point of this card is that you use it before you start your combo and yeah geo grashka I, I have no faith in summoning this card you could be summoning during battle phase using geo gremlin but i just don't think that's gonna happen i'll definitely be posting more updates on this deck uh as time goes along i want to see no one uses your sarcics really it's it's a really it's a really rogue deck like it, it's not just like kind of rogue like rogue that you could bring to a tournament it's like really rogue it's like it plays but like it loses too <laughs> that's also why i chose upstart over prosperity prosperity isn't terrible in this deck but when it comes to drawing radiation i don't want to be able to i don't want to be locked out of drawing cards off of this because prosperity can't really give us the one card that we need like there's no one card combo in this deck there's no one card that we need that solves the entire deck so i don't think prosperity is as strong in this deck as it would be in in, in other decks i'd rather play a card like upstart on top of radiation where if i draw this i get to just dig deeper into my deck if, if if i give my opponent a thousand more life points you know so what you know i can i can gain more life points you know um using geo gremlin and i'm i'm not too i i don't think this deck is too shabby i just think it needs a little more more refining and i just need to learn how to play around hand traps a bit better maybe consider cross out maybe consider dropping the hand traps all together because we have a lot of non-engine space like look at this we have uh at least 12 slots here up to 15 slots if you consider the three fenders that's 15 non-engine spaces um and for six of them you can swap them out with like phantasme alpha kaijus and then the other nine can be whatever else you want them to be i think 40 is a perfect number for this deck you don't want to overdo it um because you need to see your level seven or higher's with your your Sarctics. Um, when you're playing a two card combo, you want to have somewhere between 18 to 20 cards for that two card combo that, that can access it um, because that's like the perfect number. Anything more than that, you're like overcompensating and most times you're gonna draw three ofs. Anything less than that, it's like not enough. Uh, to get like 80% of the time. I think like 18 to 20 is like the perfect ratio for a two card combo. So that's why we, we have to commit so much to getting the Yersarctic plus D um, earthbound stuff, right? It's basically 21. Basically 20. I guess these guys don't really count. It's part of the two card combo. Uh... Let me see, actually, if, if, if these guys don't count, it's minus five. Uh, it's more like 15. It's more like 15, the two card to, to 2.5 card combo. Um, so yeah, maybe, uh, like maybe we could increase it a little more, but um, with the upstarts in our deck, like it really s increases our chances of opening just one of these. and. I don't want to contradict the radiation. I think radiation's too good for this deck to, to contradict it. So upstart over prosperity. Also, our extra deck's too fragile. Like we have <laughs> like we can't sacrifice too much uh to, to resolve prosperity. I, I I just I just don't see it happening. Um So yeah, I I, I guess because Polari's cuttable, we can also put it back here. Like these are like your optionals. I think everything before here is like mandatory. Uh, Coral Dragon's mandatory if you want to make Polari the like opposite way. Like if you only draw one of these two or like, or like a Fenrir and you draw a Groundkeeper, then you can make Polari going like Coral Dragon plus Fenrir go Polari. So 
yeah. Um, and yeah, you could also play this guy if you want to. Because they, they basically require the same materials, right? Like one beast, one fiend. You could summon using uh, this guy using that. And you can summon one beast, one fiend. So both of them use the same materials. So if you want to resolve harmonic synchro fusion twice, you can you can do it. Or if you have two earthbounds, you know. Or if you have stone sweeper plus groundkeeper, then you could also make uh, geo kraken plus gremlin. So, yeah. That's about it for now. Um, let me know what you guys think about your Sarctics and Earthbounds and Yu-Gi-Oh going into 2024 and how the meta may be impacted. But 